In the 20th century, people with superpowers became really important for jobs. The government asked these superpowered individuals to help build a city called Lincoln City. But after a while, companies preferred machines over superpowered people. So these individuals had a hard time finding jobs. Because they couldn't find work, some superpowered people got mixed up with criminal groups. One of these groups, called the Trust, started doing something terrible. They took spinal fluid from superpowered people to make a drug named Psyche. This caused a lot of problems, and now people want new rules to control the use of superpowers. The police started using drones and robots called Guardians to watch and catch superpowered people working without the right permission. A man with electric powers, Connor Reed, is trying to make a living by working at construction sites. He is looking for a steady job, but in the meantime he goes to a construction site after an interview to see if he can get some work there. The foreman allows Connor to work for half a day, but then the police show up to check if anyone is using superpowers illegally. They ask all the workers to look up so a drone can scan them to find out if they have powers. The police tell those with powers to leave and get a permit to work. During this checkup, the police find out one worker has a warrant for his arrest. When they try to arrest him, he shoots fire from his hands and attempts to run away. Then some robot police called Guardians come from the drone and shoot him until he dies. In another part of Lincoln City, the police raid a home of a man with superpowers. A Guardian robot breaks in, but the man throws a disc at the robot and breaks it. He tries to run away, but a police officer, Officer Park, stops him. Inside the apartment, they find a room where superpowered people are being drained of their spinal fluid. They also find a drug called Psyche, connecting everything to a crime boss named Marcus Sutcliffe. Meanwhile, Connor goes to see his mom at her job in a grocery store, where her boss Dave is upset with her for accidentally freezing and dropping a sauce. Mary, who has the power to create ice, is struggling to control her abilities because she has a brain tumor. Connor gets really upset when he sees Dave, the store manager, being rude to his mom and almost uses his electric powers on him. Dave isn't scared and tells them to leave the store. On their way home, Connor tells his mom she should get chemotherapy, but she says they can't afford it. The next day, while Connor is waiting for a temporary job on the street, he sees a truck from a company called Lincoln Power. His friend Travis tells him to stay away because they work for a bad guy named Sutcliffe. A man from the truck asks if there's an electric person around, someone with class two powers or stronger. Connor needs the money, so he goes up to the truck and asks for $200 in advance. The driver, Garrett, agrees and lets him in the truck. Inside, there's a strong, silent man named Freddy who uses sign language to tell Connor to wear a safety vest. They go to a chemical plant where Connor is supposed to turn off an electric fence. When he tries to cut it with bolt cutters and gets shocked, he decides to use his powers to break it instead. Another girl with them, Maddie, who can control fire, melts a lock to get inside. They start stealing chemical barrels, but then a security guard notices and tries to call for help. Garrett, who can move things with his mind, takes the radio away from a security guard during their theft at Jones Chemical, and the guard decides not to report them. When the police find out about the theft, they start looking for a red cargo van. Connor wants to be paid and leave, but Garrett insists they aren't done yet. They hide under a bridge and change the van's appearance from red to white, fooling a police drone that's looking for them. With their disguise successful, they head to a garage. In the garage, a man named Rhino is told to take them to meet Sutcliffe. They go through a hidden path to Sutcliffe's club. There, a man named Wesley Cumbo from the Trust is upset with Sutcliffe for not paying money he owes. He challenges Sutcliffe to prove his mind-reading powers by revealing what another man, Copperhead, is thinking about, which turns out to be violent thoughts towards Cumbo. Cumbo gives Sutcliffe a deadline to pay the debt. After the confrontation, Garrett introduces Connor to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe reads Connor's mind and decides he'll be useful. He then asks Nia to give Connor a tour of the place. Nia tries to give Connor a drink at the club, but he says he's just there for a short time. Sutcliffe explains to Garrett that he can't pay for the stolen chemicals right now because he has to settle a debt with Kumbo first to avoid trouble. Sutcliffe is curious about Connor's electrical powers and considers using him for another task. Garrett agrees that Connor is talented but mentions he needs more training. Sutcliffe urges Garrett to get Connor ready fast for a lucrative job. After their conversation, Garrett gives Connor an extra $300 and tells him to come back the next day for another job opportunity, encouraging him not to squander his abilities. At home, Connor learns his mom tried to get her grocery store job back. He criticizes her boss, but she insists they need the income. 
Meanwhile, at the club, Nia tells Sutcliffe she needs to stay out of sight. Sutcliffe offers her a drug, but wants a favor in return. Elsewhere, officers Park and Davis are looking into the theft at Jones Chemicals. They figure out that the thieves stole a lot of chemicals, likely to dilute drugs for Sutcliffe. They also deduce that someone with electrical powers disabled the fence and a person with fire powers broke through a lock during the robbery. Officer Park instructs Davis to identify electrics who are capable of the kind of power they observed at the crime scene. The following day, Travis warns Connor to tread carefully if he's going to work with Sutcliffe's group. However, when a foreman from a previous job shows up looking for electric workers, Connor opts to join Garrett, who has just arrived. Garrett questions Connor's reasons for not seeking a regular job and learns about the urgent need for money to afford his mother's medical treatment. To test Connor's abilities, Garrett challenges him to disable a car alarm he triggers. Impressed with Connor's skill and after promising him $25,000 for the next robbery, Garrett begins to trust him. To prepare for the upcoming heist, Garrett starts training Connor, beginning with a simple exercise to light a bulb, which Connor initially fails by burning out the bulb. In the days leading to the heist, Connor is assigned various smaller jobs, like collecting money from drug dealers, improving his control over his powers. Eventually, he masters the bulb exercise. Later, Connor confronts Dave at the grocery store to intimidate him. He then lies to his mom saying he got a permanent job, but outside their home, police officers Park and Davis are secretly watching him. They check his background and realize he doesn't have stable employment and is struggling with his mother's health care costs, so they decide to monitor him more closely. The next step for Connor and Garrett is to scout a bank, checking out the security setup, camera positions, and vault location. Connor points out that they can't open the vault without triggering the alarm. Garrett plans their robbery timing around the bank's drone response time, aiming to complete their heist in under five minutes. Back at the grocery store, Mary notices a change in Dave's attitude. He's unexpectedly kind and avoids giving her hard tasks, likely due to Connor's threat. During the bank heist, Connor disables the power to stop the bank from securing the vault. As the alarm blares, they force a bank employee to open the vault, but discover most of the money is already gone because the bank had moved it earlier. They take the remaining cash and flee. Outside, they find drones waiting for them. Connor uses his electric powers to take down the drones. After escaping, they return to Sutcliffe's club with only $50,000, much less than they hoped for from the bank robbery. During a heated argument between Garrett and Sutcliffe about debt repayment, an attacker named Copperhead tries to shoot Sutcliffe. However, Rhino, who is immune to bullets, shields him. Copperhead then targets Nia, but Connor uses his powers to knock the gun from her hand. When Copperhead attacks Connor with a knife, Rhino intervenes again and fatally shoots her to ensure she won't be a threat anymore. Later, Connor finds Nia using a dangerous drug and learns that she's been targeted before. When he asks why she owes her loyalty to Sutcliffe, Nea explains her debt is because of her healing abilities, which she then uses to treat an injury Connor has. Back at home, Connor's mother Mary questions him about some unexpected money. He claims it's from overtime work, but she's done her homework and knows he's lying. During their argument, Mary's uncontrollable powers flare up and she collapses. At the hospital, the situation becomes dire. Doctors inform Connor that his mother's tumor is causing severe pressure on her brain and immediate surgery is essential. But when Connor asks about the cost, he's hit with the reality that the price is far beyond his means, deepening his sense of desperation. Right outside the hospital, two police officers are waiting to take Connor to the police station for questioning. They ask him about recent crimes at a chemical plant and a bank, but Connor denies any knowledge. They caution him about his association with Sutcliffe, the city's most dangerous criminal. Officer Park then reveals that the police are close to destroying a massive stash of the drug psych that belongs to Sutcliffe, aiming to weaken his criminal operations. Park tries to persuade Connor to provide information on Sutcliffe, hinting at help for his sick mother in exchange. However, the conversation turns sour when Davis provokes Connor by disrespecting his father. Frustrated, Connor insists they've mistaken him for someone else and urges them to verify the security tapes. Park decides to release Connor, citing insufficient evidence, while Davis cynically suggests they could frame him, reflecting a bias against those with powers. Disgusted by the idea, Park dismisses it and walks away. After being released, Connor meets Garrett outside and assures him he didn't talk to the cops. He asks to see Sutcliffe, proposing a plan. 
Once they reach their hideout, Sutcliffe, who can read minds, confirms Connor's loyalty. Connor then proposes they hijack the police's operation to destroy a huge batch of psych, turning their plan into an opportunity for a heist. Garrett supports the idea, suggesting they intercept the transport and steal the drugs before they're destroyed. Connor negotiates with Sutcliffe, asking for Nia's freedom in exchange for retrieving the psych drug. Sutcliffe realizes Connor wants to use Nia's healing abilities to save his mother. Nia, feeling used, angrily exits the conversation. Meanwhile, Garrett negotiates for a more significant role, wanting to be Sutcliffe's partner rather than just another member of his crew. Sutcliffe acknowledges Garrett's contributions and agrees to the partnership. Connor tries to explain his intentions to Nia, promising to release her after she helps his mother. However, Nia accuses him of valuing her only for her healing power. When the day of the heist arrives, the team sets up roadblocks to intercept the psych transport. They anticipate that the van will be escorted by drones, which won't be able to follow into a restricted airspace zone. The van's driver, encountering a roadblock, diverts off the planned route. Maddie and Freddy tail the van while Garrett uses a garbage truck to block its path. As Garrett distracts the driver, Connor gathers his energy to unleash a targeted electrical attack. Once Garrett moves away, Connor releases the surge, disabling the van and its guardian escorts, while Freddy and Maddie work together to take out the rest. Maddie creates an opening in the armored van with fire, allowing Freddy to throw in tear gas, which forces the police officers inside to come out. When the van doesn't respond, a surveillance drone risks entering the restricted airspace to investigate. Maddie seizes the psych drugs from the incapacitated officers and passes them to Rhino. As the guards plead for mercy, Rhino and his crew cruelly open fire on them. In a shocking turn, Rhino betrays Maddie by shooting her just as she turns around, alarmed by the gunshots. Garrett quickly uses his powers to move Freddy to safety, shielding him from Rhino's gunfire. Rhino flees the scene, leaving his henchmen to fight Garrett's group and the arriving Guardian robots. In the ensuing chaos, the Guardians target Rhino's remaining men. While one thug shoots at Garrett, the other confronts the robots, which efficiently eliminate them. Garrett, Freddy, and Connor use this distraction to escape. During their escape, they realize Freddy has been shot, so Garrett helps him into a getaway car. Back at Sutcliffe's, Rhino presents the stolen psych to him. Nia, concerned for the others, questions their whereabouts, but Sutcliffe dismisses her and hands her a dose of the drug instead. After finding out about Freddy's death, Connor confronts Garrett, blaming him for the failed heist and accusing Sutcliffe of betrayal, influenced by Garrett's aggressive tactics. At the police station, Davis reports to the chief that Connor is a key suspect in the heist, but Park argues that Connor is merely being manipulated believing he's not capable of the violence associated with the crime. Connor, feeling desperate, visits his mother in the hospital, vowing to secure her treatment, but Mary, weary and resigned, asks him to give up his dangerous lifestyle. Elsewhere, Park spends time with his daughter, Lena. During a park outing, Travis delivers a message to Park from Connor, prompting a clandestine diner meeting. Connor seeks Park's help, but by then, he feels trapped by his circumstances and declares it too late for any deal, underscoring his sense of entrapment and despair. Connor promises to surrender to the police but wants to help them apprehend Sutcliffe first. The police get ready to raid the bar where Sutcliffe is located. During the raid, Sutcliffe, feeling unwell, asks Nia for healing. As she does so, the police cut the power and open fire. In the chaos, Sutcliffe, Nia, and Rhino escape through a hidden route to the garage. There, Garrett ambushes them, shooting Sutcliffe. Rhino tries to retaliate, but Garrett disarms him using his telekinetic powers and shoots him multiple times. Despite the bullets, Rhino charges at Garrett, who then uses his powers to slow Rhino down. Connor arrives just in time to hit Rhino with a powerful electric shock. In the midst of this, Sutcliffe, desperate and wounded, tries to coerce Nia into saving him. During the confrontation, Rhino manages to overpower Connor and throws him against a table. Connor struggles to free himself from Rhino's grasp and tries to use his electric powers. In a desperate move, Garrett grabs a sharp metal object and stabs Rhino in the eye. Connor delivers a deadly electric shock to Rhino's head, killing him. Naya then confronts Sutcliffe, who expects her to heal him. Instead, she seizes his gun. Seeing this, Garrett uses his powers to both choke Sutcliffe and wrest the gun from Nia's hands. Connor reassures Nia that after she heals his mother, she will be released from any obligations and can leave. Garrett hands Connor the gun, suggesting he use it to secure his needs. 
Naya warns Connor about the potential fatal cost of using her healing powers on his mother, showing him the toll it took on her own health. Ignoring her warning, Connor brings Nia to the hospital to heal Mary. However, witnessing Nia's suffering, he halts the process, choosing to spare her at his mother's expense. Mary passes away with Connor by her side. The aftermath at the garage leaves Sutcliffe dead, discovered by Park and Davis. Connor, honoring his promise, surrenders to the police with Nia, giving her the keys to a fueled truck for her escape. The fallout from the heist and the deaths of four officers spark a movement to ban superpowers in Lincoln City. Meanwhile, Park and Davis are recognized for their valor. Garrett, surviving the chaos, settles debts with Cumbo, offering more than what was due from Sutcliffe. Connor visits his mother's grave, acknowledging his impending absence due to incarceration. Nia, now free, visits her father in prison, hopeful for her future outside Sutcliffe's shadow. 